Prophet is the bill, 7750 media. Let me continue from where I left off in the previous video. The moral standards and ethics established by the fathers in times past and present do not die out and disappear when they die. In order for me to understand exactly what was going on in my life and the marriage of abomination, I had to pray the right prayers over myself and my children. And the Lord guided me to study everything that I'm talking about. The education system does not tell the students about the idolatry of Washington DC and the White House or the racist agendas of Buckingham Palace or about the lifestyles of politicians and philosophers that we've heard about in political science and English literature. This is the reason God also gave me an emblem called 7750 Family and Education. Going back to the dream I spoke about in the earlier video, let me clarify that the patriarch counterpart of King Sobuza II from the Egypt of Lesotho was 48 years old in 1986 when the father of the law was appointed to the Ministry of Health in January of that year following a coup. The matriarch of the law that I was clearly symbolizing in that scenario was some 12 years younger than her husband, who was 62, turning 63 in that year, 1986. The eldest son of the household of the law is about to turn 62 in Virgo on the 7th of September, while the 63 is the year of birth of the current king, as well as Whitney Houston. It was upon my questioning of the marital infidelities and adulteries in my marriage and making reference to the affair between the counterpart of King Sobuza II and the matriarch of the law that the mafia causa nostra of the family of doctors began threatening my siblings and myself with their superior knowledge of being doctors who are trained to diagnose mental illnesses and treat them with poisonous cocktails of pharmaceutical drugs, probably laced with other more lethal substances. I hear the voice of Whitney Elizabeth Houston singing, didn't we almost have it all? Didn't William Shakespeare sing or say that if music be the food of love, play on in the famous play called Twelfth Night? And I spoke about Alistair Crowley being the poet in videos posted last week. I guess the Lord is following up on Janet Jackson portraying the character of poetic justice from the videos that I had to delete. In the kingdom of the Egyptian crocodiles of the Nile and the incests of Queen Cleopatra, because of the Egyptian obelisks, Cleopatra's needles and sphinxes of ancient pharaohs strategically placed in the capital cities of imperial powers and world superpowers, the people of the Masonic Brotherhood will engage in legal battles to protect their names and reputations, their brands and the like, because this is the game of the systems and establishments who control institutions everywhere. I go back to Jeremiah 33, Verse 3, call me and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and hidden things you have not known. God is not a man. I keep saying it. By 1986, the aspiring couple of the father and mother of the law were married some 26 years, and their firstborn child and daughter was 25 years old. And hence the Lord pointing out the 125 year anniversary of the birth of my king and ancestor, King Sobuza II, in the 25th year of the marriage of hell and abomination. I said from the start that one always means the beginning, the genesis and the first. This is the esteemed witch doctor, dentist Gagu, 
of King Solomon's minds, who gives advice to the illegitimate King Twilas of their brotherhood on how to deal with their wives and households. She was indeed at the forefront of the plot to serve me with snitch-like poisons to be put in my food and drink so that they could cover up their adulteries and sex scandals. Let's see where the key of David opens next. From Isaiah 22, 22, making the number 44 of being chosen and Revelation 3, 7 of total power in the voice. I saw a sign that said MD 65 DP, meaning that a certain MD is in a 65 Helen pandemonium and it is a very deep one. And this has nothing to do with the MD of the kingdom of heaven on earth who represents my trust in the liberating king and his justice. On the 31st of July, 2013, shortly after the burial, of the matriarch of the law. Americanvision.org published an article by Gary DeMar titled Desmond Tutu, the epitome of liberal insanity. This article sums up the ideals of the birds of a democratic feather. All hail to his majesty King Sopoza II for rejecting this madness of Babylon. And I'm just going to read an extract of that article and it goes I would refuse to go to a homophobic to a homophobic heaven I mean I would much rather go to the other place to to say I would not worship a god who is homophobic and that is how deeply I feel about this let's play a, a game of fill in the blank I would not worship a god who opposed blank and that is how deeply I feel about this. Fill in any liberal cause, everything from government theft, progressive taxation, to abortion on demand, premeditated murder, and you get some idea of the extremism of liberalism. Tutu demonstrates that liberal, liberal, liberalism is an anti-religion that manifests itself as being deeply religious. It has its own high priests, liberal pundits, inspired texts, on the origin of speech, species and sacraments, abortion and same sex, heaven becomes hell and hell becomes heaven. Desmond Tutu is a retired Anglican bishop, best known as, the, as an opponent of South African apartheid. This is how Wikipedia describes him. Tutu's admirers see him as a man who since the demise of apartheid has been active in the defense of human rights and uses his high profile to campaign for the oppressed, though his consistent opposition to Israel and the United States has made him controversial. He's received the usual number of liberal accolades, everything from the Nobel Peace Prize to the Presidential Medal of Freedom. The more radical a person is, the more awards he gets. Remember that President Obama, 2009, and Al Gore, 2007, have received the Nobel Peace Prize. Tutu has been a longtime advocate of same-sex sexuality. In an interview with BBC Radio on November 18, 2007, Tutu declared, if God, as they say, is homophobic, I wouldn't worship that God. He stated at the launching of the book, Sex, Love, and Homophobia, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Lives, A to Z, that homophobia is a crime against humanity and every bit as unjust as apartheid. Tutu reminds me of Satan in Milton's Paradise Lost. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. The problem with Tutu's ultimatum is that God is in charge of hell. Hell is not a separate realm over which its occupants have control. They will still be ruled by God. There are other points to consider. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus, come down. This is enough. I think I'm going to leave it here for now. Thanks for listening.